Do you remember at age 14 hiding in the bushes alongside that road, thinking about attacking yes. the jogger? Yes. Yeah, I remember doing that. So that's the point at which it shifted from, from animals to people. Well, years 14 or 15 in that area. Yeah. The house was empty. Jeffrey's parents had recently divorced, and he was home alone. Uh, I wish I just keep on kept on going, but I didn't. I turned around, picked him up, and uh, that's when that's when it, the nightmare became a reality. What happened after you took him to the house? Uh, we talked, had some drinks. I knocked him out, and that was, that was the first time. Was this about some kind of desire to keep these people with you, not to be abandoned, not to have them leave? I think it, it, that did play into it, but uh, there was a big element of wanting complete control over someone, total control, uh, not having to, to consider their wishes, being able to keep them there as long as I wanted, and uh, that, that was a big part of it. Lust played a big part of it, controlling lust. Once it happened the first time, it just seemed like uh, it had control of my life from there on end. I, that, it uh, was a major part of my thinking from then on. Did you want to try to stop? Yes, I, I tried. I tried to stop. And the killing did stop for a while. But Jeffrey says in 1984, while living here at his grandmother's house in Milwaukee, his violent compulsions consumed him once again. One night, cruising these bars in downtown Milwaukee, he met a young man and took him to this hotel. I had put some sleeping pills in his drink to render him unconscious, and uh, was just going to spend the night with him. When I woke up in the morning, uh, my forearms were bruised, and his chest was was bruised, and blood was coming out of his mouth. He was hanging over the side of the bed, and uh, I have no memory of beating him to death, but I must have. And that's when it when it all started again. And once it started again, you found it impossible to stop. Right. That that's when the the obsession went into full swing. My my only objective was to find the, the best looking uh, guy that I could. I went to bathhouses, I went to bars, um, shopping malls. Uh, their sexual preference didn't matter to me. Uh, was it the killing that excited you? Or is it what happened after the killing? No, the, the killing was just a means to an end. That, that was the least set, uh, satisfactory part. I didn't enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. That's why I tried to uh, create uh, living zombies with uh, muriatic acid in the, in the drill. One of those failed experiments to create a living zombie was conducted on this 14-year-old boy. Jeffrey had drilled a hole in his head and poured in acid a crude attempt at lobotomy that none of his victims survived. No, the killing wasn't, wasn't the objective. I just wanted to have the person under my complete control uh, to do with as I wanted. Yeah. It's not easy to say that, but that's, that's what the motive was. Was there something sexual in the dismemberment of the bodies for you? As time went on, uh, yes, I, I did get a, there was a sexual part, part to that. Uh, I started saving the, the skeletons and preserving other parts. And uh, one thing led to another. It took, it took more and more uh, deviant type behaviors to satisfy uh, my urges. And so it just spiraled out of control. Why the cannibalism? 
that was that was another step. Uh, it, it it made me feel like they were uh, a permanent part of me. Besides besides the just mere curiosity of what it would be like, it made them feel that they were a part of me, and it, it gave me a, a sexual uh, uh, satisfaction to do that. I didn't uh, have to be accountable to anybody. I felt that uh, I could keep it in my own secret little world, keep everything under control, um, and would never have to deal with the consequences. And so things just progressed from bad to worse. Your dad has wondered about all kinds of things, from the medication that your mom was on during her pregnancy, to the fact that you were exposed to violent arguments in the home from an early age and continuing to the possibility that he might have passed on some genetic propensity for obsession or violent behavior. Does any of that ring true to you? I, I can see why he'd wonder about those things, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're all excuses. I feel it's uh, wrong for people who commit crimes to try to shift the blame onto somebody else, onto their parents or onto their, their upbringing or, circ or living circumstances. I, I think that's just a, a cop-out. I take full responsibility. How do you feel about what you did? I'm glad that it's over. Um, there, there's nothing, any words I say to the, to the victim's families are, are just going to seem trite and empty. Uh, I, I don't know how to express the regret, the sorrow, that I feel for what I've done for their, for their sons. Uh, I can't find the right words.